Right. On average, how many Canadian patients on a waiting list die each year? Do you know? I don't, sir, but I know that there are 45,000 in America who die waiting because they don't have insurance at all. Martin, in your testimony, you note that Canadian doctors exiting the public system for the private sector has had the effect of increasing, increasing waiting lists for patients seeking public health care. Why are doctors exiting the public system in Canada? Thank you for your question, Senator. I, I, uh, if if I didn't express myself in a way that to make myself understood, I apologize. There are no doctors exiting the public system in Canada. And in fact, we see a net influx of physicians from the United States into the Canadian system over the last number of years. What I did say was that the solution to the wait time challenge that we have in Canada, which we do have a difficult time uh, with waits for elective medical procedures, does not lie in moving away from our single payer system towards a multi-payer system. And that's borne out by uh, the experience of Australia. So Australia used to have a single tier system and in the 1990s moved to a multiple payer system where private insurance was permitted. And a, a very well-known study by Duckett et al. Uh, was uh, tracked what took place in terms of wait times in Australia as the multi-payer system was put in place. And what they found was in those areas of Australia where private insurance was being taken up and utilized, waits in the public system became longer. What do you say to a, a, an elected official who goes to Florida and not the Canadian system to have a heart valve replaced? It's actually interesting because, in fact, the, uh, the people who are the pioneers of that particular surgery, which Pre Premier Williams had, uh, and had the best health uh, outcomes in the world for that surgery are in Toronto at the uh, at the Peter Monk Cardiac Centre just down the street from where I work. Anybody so what I say is that sometimes sometimes people have a perception, and I, I believe that and actually this is fueled in part by uh, media discourse that going to where something where where you pay more for something that that necessarily makes it better, but it's not actually borne out by the evidence on outcomes. And what we've we found is that actually working within the single payer system, we can reorganize things. You know, I waited more than 30 minutes at the security line to get into this building today. And when I arrived in the lobby, I noticed across the hall that there was a second entry point with no lineup whatsoever. Sometimes it's not actually about the amount of resources that you have, but rather about how you organize people uh, in order to use your cues most effectively. And that's what we're working to do because we believe that when you try to address wait times, you should do it in a way that benefits everyone, not just people who can afford to pay.